Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Welcome to AutoLine Daily, where we work to keep you up to speed with what's happening in the global automotive industry. In today's show, we'll show you some new supplier technology. Then, sorry Tesla, we'll explain the benefits of the dealer franchise system. And look out Google, your Chinese counterpart wants to get into autonomous cars. Now to the news, where we start out in Japan because Honda released its latest financial earnings and the numbers all look good. Honda sales of cars were up 4% to nearly 900,000 units. Its motorcycle sales jumped to 2.4 million bikes. That drove up revenue to just over $29 billion. Its operating profit was up 7% to just under $2 billion, while net profit soared nearly 20% to a billion four. Whenever you see earnings increase faster than car sales, that shows management is doing a great job of running the company. Now let's jump over to Europe, where Renault released its earnings for the first half of the year, not just the most recent quarter. And the numbers do not look encouraging. Renault managed to boost sales nearly 5% to 1.3 million vehicles, but its revenue fell 3% to $26 billion. The one encouraging number is its operating profit, which shot up 25% to nearly $980 million. And Renault posted a net profit of a billion dollars. But that number just is not as good as it looks. Renault actually lost $166 million in the first half. But because it owns 43% of Nissan, the Japanese automaker had to turn over part of its profits, nearly a billion dollars, to the French automaker. And in Russia, Renault reported that it lost $74 million in its venture with Autovaz. Well, that sure didn't take long. Kia updated its best-selling SUV, the Sorento, just over a year ago, and now it's already showing off the all-new third generation. Unlike the last time, the styling will be getting more than just a few tweaks to the front and rear fascias. The overall stance of the vehicle just looks more sporty and muscular than before, and it also gets a more upright version of the automaker's signature grille. It was styled at Kia's design centers in Korea, Germany, and the U.S. The all-new Sorento will first be shown off in Korea at the end of August, and then it will make its way to this year's Paris Auto Show. Autoline will be there too, by the way. Electronic parking brakes are nothing new, but there was one segment of the industry where supplier company Continental felt the technology was lacking. Entry-level compact cars with drum brakes. Its system uses two actuators with the controller mounted to the drum brake assembly. Continental says it's more convenient for the user to just have to hit a button rather than pull a lever, and it also gives interior designers more freedom. The system will be ready to hit production vehicles by 2017, but we're not so sure this technology is right for entry-level compact cars. Most people buy them because they're cheap and usually cheap to repair but the electronic parking brake assembly is most likely going to be more expensive to replace than a parking brake cable if it goes bad, and it'll probably cost more in labor when it comes time to replace the brake shoes. We all know how poor Google's relationship with China is. In fact, China bans the use of Google Earth, which means Tesla's navigation system will not work in China. All that gives Google's main Chinese competitor, a company called Baidu, quite an advantage. And now comes word that, like Google, Baidu is developing its own autonomous vehicle. It'll use radar, lasers, cameras, and GPS to pilot the vehicle, and testing is scheduled to start before the year is out. We've been wondering when the Chinese would get into autonomous technology, and this will undoubtedly move that technology forward faster. Speaking of Tesla, it's suing states to avoid selling its cars through the franchise dealer system. Coming up next, I'll tell you why that franchise system is better than most people realize. 
Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. The public is enamored with Tesla's way of selling its cars in its own stores. They believe the dealer franchise system is archaic and that dealers are unnecessary middlemen who drive up the cost of cars. But I wonder if the public has thought this all the way through. Car dealers actually have pretty thin margins. On average, they make about a 2% profit margin. The best ones make about 5%. That's because dealers have to compete against each other. Do you think dealers would compete so heavily if they were factory owned? No, the factory would set the price and there would be no negotiations, just like Tesla. Dealers also will happily take your used car in as a trade-in, no matter what brand it is. They'll pay you a wholesale price, then turn around and retail it in their used car lot. You think factory-owned stores would be interested in selling used cars from another car company? Of course not. You know how Tesla dealers handle trade-ins? They send you to AutoNation. Dealers are consumer advocates when it comes to doing warranty and recall work because they get paid by the factory to do it. You think factory-owned stores would be so consumer-friendly? <laughs> Warranty and recalls would represent higher cost, not more revenue. You know, personally, I have no problem with Tesla wanting to sell its cars in its own stores. I admire Elon Musk's will do it our way approach. And besides, Tesla is a niche player. The real danger is when Chinese automakers finally start to sell cars in the American market. They could easily decide to sidestep franchise laws because Tesla has already set the precedent. That could really wreak havoc in the car market, which would not be good for the car companies, not good for the franchisees, but most importantly, it would not be good for consumers. Let's hope the public wakes up to this before it's too late. Anyway, that's what I think, and that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching, and join us again tomorrow.